Hey church, my name is Kelsey Ross and I'm the director of youth ministries at Wesley and I'm here tonight to bring you your nightly devotion. But before we do, I want to make you aware of our Paint the Town Wesley event, which is this Wednesday, January 20th. We as a church will be making peace polls together via Zoom. This is what mine looks like and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. But I do want to tell you to plan to swing by Wesley West between 6 and 7 p.m. to grab your poll. Then log on to Zoom with us at 7 p.m. where I'll show everyone how to assemble your poll. You see that mine is painted, but yours doesn't have to be. Aside from the poll, which Wesley will provide, gather any arts and crafts materials that you have around your house to make your poll your own. And so now that you know what we're doing, I'll tell you a little bit more about why we're doing it. As you probably already know, and you can feel, we are a nation in desperate need of peace. In lieu of the transition of political power on Wednesday at the inauguration, we wanna to gather to do something tangible together as a church family to help promote a message of peace and grace and love. The concept of a peace poll was originated in 1955 in Japan by a man named Masahisa Goi. It is also often referred to as a peace prayer in which we decorate a poll like this one and write the message, may peace prevail on earth in all, on all four sides in varying languages. Now this is what mine looks like because it's already done. But this is what yours will look like. It's not painted yet or decorated. It'll have a little tag on it so you know that you're grabbing the right thing. And you'll get this and take it home and then we will decorate it together when you join onto Zoom. But this, this peace poll is meant to help promote a message of peace, especially in the midst of particularly uncertain and trying times. Poles that are a lot bigger than ours stand at various monuments across the globe in places like the Hiroshima Peace Memorial, the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, which is the site of a civil rights era bombing in 1963. And there's even a peace pole standing at the Egyptian pyramids. So you can take heart church knowing that we are joining in a long-standing tradition of peacemakers and Christians across the globe who wear a message of peace with pride, encouraging nonviolent avenues to resolve conflict and recognizing our unique differences as badges of honor, God's beloved children living in harmony together. After we construct our peace poles, you'll probably have to prop it up on your front porch for a few months because the ground's probably too hard to put your pole into it right now. But come warmer weather, we invite you to stick it in your front yard and let it be a message of comfort to all those who may encounter it. But as I come to you tonight, I, I also want to share another message with you. And this, this is a message about feeling small. I don't know about you, church, but in the last few months, the headlines I wake up to every morning and the turmoil that surrounds our country and our communities and our people, it's been heartbreaking. And it's made me feel smaller and smaller with each passing day. I don't know about you, but my ability to make a lasting impact, to influence real true change for the better, to spread God lo God's love in the world amidst all that we are going through, has felt like an increasingly narrow path that I'm walking. I felt small, and I felt incredibly insignificant standing next to all that is hitting our nation and our world today. But I know, and I know that you know, that we as God's children, never have to give up hope. I know that when we feel small, God calls us beloved and reminds us of our unique and genuine ability to change the world by serving him. So my hope for our time together and for our time specifically this Wednesday is that you would feel your own ability to change the world. I hope that you would hear this message of encouragement to know that if all the impact you have the ability to make right now is a peace pole on your front porch, that is enough. And I hope also as we head into this week in which tensions remain high and a lot of us feel like we're holding our breath waiting to see what will happen next, that you remember that we love and serve a God who is holding the whole world in his hands. I'm gonna leave you tonight with a word of scripture which comes to us from Romans chapter eight, verse 28. And it's a passage that I'm sure you've heard before. It says, and we know for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. Oh church, I believe that all things will work together for good in our world and I believe that together we are among the ones who will make it happen. So 
May peace prevail on earth. And we'll see you soon to start the work together. Bye, church.